question. Well, I guess there's there's two ways of writing. There's you know solo and collaborative, yeah. and uh, our band mostly does <clears throat> solo songwriting. And then as far as the lyrics and uh, and the basic melody, and then we collaborate. Um, mm -hmm. As far as putting the whole structure of the song together and just really fine tuning the song, um, that's typically how Scythia does it. Is we present a song and then we just mash it out and. Yeah. Uh, and then the best way to decide whether or not it's good is just to keep playing it, playing it, and then it slowly evolves. Yeah. And once you've played it about 40 times, and then you realize it's beginning to be ready to be put on a record. Or it's yeah. or it's not <laughs> or it's fine. Or it's fine. Yeah, it's very much the same for us. Uh, we, uh, we, I mean, I know that I, I write very much solo. I'll, I'll sit at home and I'll demo things on my computer. And usually by the time I take anything to the band, I've got every note of it mapped out in my head. Then usually they take it and deconstruct it a little bit and try and make it better than I can make it in my head. And, uh, same with Trevor, he'll bring 30 songs to us and he's just got chord progressions and lyrics and, and melodies and things and we'll all jam through it. Yeah. Sometimes it's a very different end result than the, uh, the idea you had in the first person. If you want to write songs though, I think the, the best thing you can do is write and write and write on a regular basis. Keep a journal, yeah. you know, be, you know read, read as much as you can, yeah. Um, yeah. and then bring in things from your, your own personal life. You know, it's, yeah. And this could, maybe is not tough, but maybe you may want to read poetry. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 <laughs> that's a good place for inspiration. Have you guys uh, heard of the first Irish rock group, Horselips? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Do you follow on the path of taking Celtic music in all of your music that you write, or is it, you know, comfortable with uh, just your own compositions? Do you base it on what they used to do, or? No, I don't really hear you guys very often. Yeah, not, uh, not directly, but. but I mean, we, End of the Haggis, we definitely started off as much more of a, sort of a, it was definitely always our focus to make sure that every song had that Celtic element in it, whatever that was. And whether it was an instrument or a melody line, or if it was actually an old Irish song that we were treating to turn into one of our own, we've kind of moved away from that, but not because, uh, it's not really a conscious thing, we just, it, it's become such a big part of who we are as a band that it's not as conscious anymore. You know, everything we write does kind of sound like that now, and so now we just write and see what comes up. And even if a song doesn't have fiddler bagpipes in it, people still hear it, and there's there's sort of an element to it that uh, sounds like a folk song or something. Okay. Probably because it still was playing. Yeah, right. <laughs> but then what you guys? Um, well, we have a, <clears throat> a different origins. My brother Alexander and I were Ukrainian, so we're Eastern European. But Alexander, you you're probably good at answering this because he went to Dublin actually, and he played. In the streets. I wasn't homeless though. <laughs> there we go. I look homeless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that, that, that's kind of what it means to be a musician. Uh, you're, you're kind of like a, you're a homeless person. Pretty much. You just travel around the country and you don't really have a home. But, or but, you're a houseless person. You got homes everywhere. There Maybe go. that's a better way of putting it. But uh, anyway, you know, I went to Ireland for four months and then uh, I just played in the streets and I played the Irish sessions. And what I think. Ah, uh, fiddle. So, yep, it was, it was, I, I love the fiddle because it was very portable. It was just slap, you know, strap it on your back or just carry it out the door and then you could make friends with it <coughs> everywhere you went. So I went there by myself and every night I would just go out, break it out, play in uh, the, the square and then by the end of the time I finished playing, so, some musician would just stop, listen and, and might you know, come play. And a lot of it was Irish music and so uh, I, I went there, recorded a lot, played during the day and then just got a lot of inspiration, brought it back, and then we started the band. And, and it was a lot of the traditional music was infused into it, but with sort of our own take, because we're Americans, uh, also Ukrainian American. I just love the Irish music, because you know, for obvious reasons, for the same reason you're here. But so, you know, I think that was, uh, but over time, it's like when I was saying, you kind of you evolve, you change, and, and who you really are deep inside comes out naturally. And that's what you want as a musician. You want. You want to be able to eventually um, put your stamp on music, and it, I think it happens organically if you, if you do it long enough. You write, you try, and you, you bring in the old influence. It's sort of an apprenticeship with the folk music. I always thought yeah. of it that way. It's like an apprenticeship. It's you pay your dues, learn the old music, and then yeah. and then eventually, what hopefully as a student, you start churning out music, that, but that's sort of in the same inspired spirit. So that's the goal, and I think that eventually started happening with us, which. 
It didn't for a while. I mean, I was I was just an instrumentalist, and so the songwriting didn't come out that naturally, but uh, or, or that quickly rather. It naturally did come out eventually. So it was uh, it was encouraging when eventually it started coming out. But I think that's the best way of putting it. It's kind of an apprenticeship. Pay your dues. You know, play the music. Learn the learn the craft. And learn from the, the greats like the horse. You know, horse lips and. They pay tribute to the, the ones that came before them. And you just do that with, with music, and eventually you get your own style of music. Mm -hmm. How did you guys come up with your name, Sissy? That is a very good question. <laughs> Thank rock, you for rock, asking them. Rock, <laughs> yeah, rock, paper, scissors. That's how we did it. <laughs> <laughs> just took a bunch of letters and threw them in a bag. <laughs> Scrabble. Sissy or Yahtzee. Yeah. Uh, Scythian, actually, well, my, brother, my brother came up with it. Um, where Ukraine is? Do you, do you all know where you, uh, the Ukraine is? It's in Eastern Europe. So, where, do you know where Ireland is on, in, on, in Europe? Yeah. So, if, if so you're looking at the map, right, of Ireland, mm -hmm. you're going to go really far this way, and on this end of Europe is Ukraine. And, they, and then the, the Scythians were a tribe of barbarians. Oh. We didn't shower very regularly. What do you mean? So we thought it would be pretty, uh, pretty cool to have a name like that because it was our ancestors and they were pretty yeah. tough, tough guys. They mixed, they mixed with the early Celts, early Celts with the Picts. And there was a big melting pot of a lot of cultures. So there was some of the, uh, you know, the Eastern culture and the Western, and that's what we do with our music. We, we, we do a little bit of Eastern music. And, Obviously, the, the, the Irish as well. So, has some roots, but it's that's kind of a long, boring answer. We just say you know, barbarians who don't use forks or phonics. <laughs> <laughs> forks or phonics, I like that. Yeah, well, thanks for not asking about the name of Enter the Hex. <laughs> that, that's worse. Hey, where, where is that? No, that ship has sailed, Joe. Do you all eat hikes for breakfast? <laughs> not today. <laughs> I've been waiting on this entire tour, it has not been brought out once. You know what? We, we probably should have made you guys eat haggis on this tour, right? Yeah. Yeah. On We're video, over. on so Facebook. That's what you mean. They're, they're That's Ukrainian, it. they bring out something much, much more That is true. Yeah. <laughs> they That's think true. That they'd be this. By putting together, have you guys became friends? Oh, yeah. that's a really good question. <laughs> Honestly? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly? <laughs> After Buffalo, it's gonna be like it's gonna be like graduating high school. All our friends are gonna be going their separate ways. We're gonna be signing each other's yearbooks. It's I, I foresee a teary affair. We just all have a find out children like I think it's a lot like having a family when you when you make music with other people because you, it, when you're making music together, you have to be respectful of the other person. You're just not gonna play whatever you want. Or you're gonna be listening. And that's what it's like to be in a family. You, you, and so I find that you're gonna fight just like you're gonna fight with your brother or sister. And you have to be, just really, you know, love each other to stay together. If you're gonna be a successful man, you have to be willing to go through the good things and the bad things. But overall, what happens is um, when you're in a band, is you really do band together. Yeah. And so there, if you know, you, you have to be friends if you yeah. want to survive. And so um, that's what tends to happen in the bands. That's a good question, though. How did you meet? The two bands together or individually? Do you mean individually? Individually? Um, how did you meet? Well, in our band, uh, I, I met the band because there was a fiddle player before me who was leaving the band who had gone to high school with Trevor and our old drummer. And uh, I was the only other fiddle player he knew. <laughs> so he was leaving the band and I was the only guy he knew to call, so he called me and I went and I listened to the album once with him and then I went five hours away from home with four guys I'd never met and played three forty five minutes sets a night for three nights. <laughs> and now it's ten years later. <laughs> but uh, a lot of the time it's through school or through uh, you know musical connections or Craigslist. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, I think you guys, didn't you guys find Andrew that one? Yep, true. Yeah, we found our drummer on Craigslist. The internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it turned out he lived just down the street from you, right? Yeah, he did. I was where we did a, I did a search uh, all, all of Craigslist for the whole country, and uh, it turned out Andrew lived 
20 minutes down the road from <laughs> Sam Rose. Crazy how it works. So very good fortune. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's fun to see like you look back how just kind of luck and fate I mean, merge so together. Yeah. Some of you here will meet, you know, there are people that you, you'll meet here that you'll probably end up in a band with at some point. You know, it's, all, it's all about networking connections. Like eHarmony. Like dating with. Yeah, there really needs to be one. You know, it's a good fiddle player. You guys can make I need to paint Tara and my yeah. But I think that there's the, 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 quite, uh, the common theme is that you know, both of these guys really worked hard when they were younger. So that when they did meet someone, they weren't they were prepared. So you know they had the confidence to say yes, I'll go. Even though I don't know your music, I will go with you because I know I've worked, I've, I've practiced. And so when we called up Andrew, he was like, yeah, and he was confident to say yes. Um, yeah, I think it's as important that you get along with the people personally as you do musically, because um, you hear stories of musicians that are both good on, on their own, but together they just. It doesn't work somehow. It, it's yeah. a chemistry, just like w w with people, just like any other relationship. Um, so it, it matters that people get along musically and that they kind of gel in that way. Um, so you never can tell them until you get together and actually start making music, start playing shows together. And um, luckily, we all hit it off, you know, musically and, and personally. And I feel like I've known them for years now. <laughs> you know, it, it's been. Um, Eight, eight months, maybe, no, no, half a year. <laughs> Do you guys have a moment where you went from just being like a band playing locally to what you are now? Is there like a moment you remember where there was a conversion? Or just sort of, we split up thinly over time. Yeah, well, it's after the Haggis, we kind of did, um, going back to the, I'm, I'm not sure about Scythian, but uh, when we first started out, we were, um, what, I'd actually submitted this demo tape and it was actually in cassette. Remember those things? <laughs> and uh, this, this crummy, crummy cassette, and it was four songs on it, and it was the same songs on, on both sides. And I submitted it to this show in Toronto called The New Music. And then they went and they played it, and I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. they actually played one of, the, one of the tunes on the TV show. And the critics were sitting around going, oh yeah, this is good, you know. And then people found out, well, who was that band? Well, that was, that was Enter the Haggis band. What's that, you know? And the next thing we did was we had, uh, we, there, you know, the North by Northeast uh, Festival is in Toronto. I'm sure you've heard of South by Southwest and all this. Uh, and uh, we got a critic's pick in the paper. So by the time we, we played, like, really it was the second gig ever, <laughs> we had okay, we It's had not always that coming <laughs> in. But we were very lucky right off the bat, you know, with Henry the Haggis, and we, we very quickly, within a year, we got to the top of the sort of the Irish pub sort of scene in Toronto and, you know, started branching out from there. But I think what really, what really made the biggest difference for us was the first time we played a real show, we played a real festival in the U.S., and that was the Pennsylvania Renaissance Festival. Yeah, we're not. And we played at that, and we probably, you know, we made, made as much money in that show as we used to make in a, in a month or more or two months or something. And people were like just that. really receptive. Yeah, and it, yeah, it, it, not that it wasn't all about money, but you do have to eat, and living like a really sucks. So, uh, and it was a, an amazing response that we got. So I'd say the first time we really got anywhere was the first time we played in the USA. It's funny because uh, I mean the turning point. The, the perception is is different from city to city too. I mean, just I was just saying in the interview that I just did, uh, like it's uh, it's not all all glamour and glory. Like last night was amazing. It was probably the best show of the tour by far. We all had an amazing time. It was a huge house. Everybody singing every word of the songs. Where were we the night before that, guys? Providence. <laughs> we played in Providence, Rhode Island, and when uh, when Dan and Lex's fourteen relatives left the show, I think it was about eight people. <laughs> and, and, and the room was about the same size as the West Island. So it's, uh, it's it's a lot of hard work, and even when you feel like you've turned a corner, there's always an event like that that keeps you humble, you know. And you got to keep on slogging and keep on playing for small crowds and small venues. And I mean, these days there's no shortcuts. I mean, there's lots of Great tools. The internet makes it a lot easier to promote yourself. There's also a lot more competition, and uh, you got to take your CD I to someone's house and put it in their hands. I know that Andrew the Haggis mostly plays in the USA, but what about you guys? Do you guys travel um, from like out of the country? Like, 
Five years ago, we played in Toronto, and then we started calling ourselves the International. We actually got to play at, uh, in Sydney, Australia once. That was really awesome. For how many people? It was about 300,000 people, <laughs> which was really an amazing experience. It was during World Youth Day, so uh, it was the, 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 they did it at a race court. Race or horse race court, race track, and it was right. The Pope had done a benediction during the World Youth Day, and then we went on after the Pope. Yeah. So the Pope opened for us. <laughs> uh, I think we realized we made it. That so there was literally 300,000 people there, and it was amazing. You're but, on holy ground, was it? Yeah. yeah. Did, did you ever have day jobs at some point? It was always Yeah, we can't complain about our jobs. I mean, there's, there's definitely things that we do that are work, you know, but uh, the pros are definitely outnumbering the cons. Whenever I talk to my friends at home who work in factories or work in retail, they, I'm not allowed to complain about my job. Oh. Did you have jobs before? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Other yep. lives? Many. I, that you I have. never have to go back to? I didn't. I I'm the one like you well. Yeah, I, mean, I started a little bit later. I mean, uh, I think we all started at different stages of the game. But I was, I think, it was 27 when the band really formed. But uh, yeah, cubicle jobs, all like, three or four different types of jobs, Sales. I, which makes me really you know, appreciate this uh, in a way that Brian could never. <laughs> 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 I joined. I joined the band when I was 18, right after high school. Um, but I was, uh, I, I was living on my own from the time I was 16, so I was, I was teaching uh, violin, piano, and some guitar and stuff. I had worked with the students when I was in high school, so that was enough work. <laughs> Four nights a week, 12 students a night, you know, a couple of weekends. And, uh, so I, I do appreciate, I don't miss that, I can tell you that. <laughs> and I was working for my landlord, so my paycheck basically went straight into my rent, so I didn't even <laughs> wow. I don't think that's legal, actually. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like a Dickens novel. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, my cool rations were like... <laughs> so I have a question for the kids. So, you guys are just starting out, is that right? Yeah. yeah. And, and then you guys are going to basically try a bunch of different instruments until you find the one you want to pick? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we, uh, we, well, we're a little... We, we, uh, I started out on piano, and... I worked really hard on piano, but then, after a while, uh, when I got better at piano, I began to understand how music worked. And so then, in the band, I don't even play piano. I play guitar and the accordion. So the cool thing about music is if you work hard now and you practice, many things you practice just at least a little bit every day, you're, you're gonna get learn the language, and then you can, when you get older, it'll be easier for you to branch out and play a lot of instruments. And then when you're in a band, that's a really nice asset to have is to play more than one instrument to get the sound that you want. I play the piano. You play the piano too? That's really good. And guess what? Did you know that piano is a percussion instrument? I didn't know that either until last year. It is. It is. It's, it's considered a percussion. So is the harp. You know why? Because someone said strike the harp. <laughs> and so they call it a percussion instrument. It's a good thing to. Uh, if you're learning instruments, it's a good thing to learn something where the tuning is already there for you, like the piano. Yeah. And then it's good to learn something that where the tuning is not given to you, like violin or bagpipes, Stage something years, like yeah. that. You've got to, then you've really got to listen for the pitch. You know, so it's good to uh, train your ear that way too. I see there's a there's a pipe band looking for members back there too. Uh, when you yes. when you guys went to Australia, how do you think um, the people um, there got your name? Oh, I think it was a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I applied online to be at one of the bands at this huge festival that has you know three hundred thousand people, yeah. and the woman in charge, I used to play hacky sack with when I was in high school. <laughs> and ten years had gone by and she had moved to Australia and she recognized my last name and she I just got this email back. Did we used to play hacky sack together in Europe? <laughs> and so I've got it's uh, this incredible gift of going and playing here a thousand people.
Cool. Guys, uh, we really appreciate you coming. We don't want to take up a lot of your time, so why don't we ask one more question, and then uh, we'd like to give the band a tour of the, the Subcat Studios. Cool. Um, who, who wants to ask the last question? Sophia, you want to ask about the uh, children's album? You're all hearing about that? We didn't really enjoy that. Wait, are you the Sophia? album. Who's Sophia? What's the name of your children's album? Cake for dinner. Cake for dinner. Aww. So she was curious. I'm asking out of what, uh, sure. what your inspiration was. Uh, that's, yeah, we well, you know. Uh, I think we, we had done a, an assembly show. Uh, we were invited by you know our supporters and our fans are you know they, a lot of our teachers and they invited us to play an assembly show. I mean, there was probably five or six hundred kids there and it was one of the fun funnest shows we've done uh, over a thousand shows that we've had. I can honestly say that. So we just. We love the energy, the spirit, and uh, we also realize, I think, and the Haggis will agree, is like this, this music uh, is very accessible to all generations. So we find that little kids love loved to dance to the Irish music. And so Daniel and I, we have 25 nephews and nieces, and, and you know, we've, we've been playing for kids whenever we come over as uncles, and, and uh, decided, hey, you know, it's, it's basically the same type of music as we do with, with Scythian. And honestly, it's, it's a lot of the same ways we interact with crowds and, and bars is the same way you talk with kids. No, no, no. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's pretty fair. It's really, it's really, it's really funny. It's <laughs> but we, but uh, you know, the music comes alive with kids. I think as children, you're, at, you're, you're in a very great position that you can absorb music. And, uh, and I think we felt that from, from children. And, and our, our goal was to introduce them to all different types of music. So we have music from you know, you know, Argentina, Ukraine, Irish music, of course, Americana. It's just sort of to expand kids, you know, audio palette. And I think that uh, it, it was just a very fun project for us. We had five nephews and nieces with us singing on the album. Yeah, that's great. Um, and, and so it's it, that's, that was very rewarding to, to have an uh, outlet to be able to work with kids too. So. Well, thank you very much.